Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to go through a review of adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. Now, fractions show up and are important all throughout math. So being familiar with these operations will be very beneficial, really, no matter where you're at, whether that's in middle school, high school, college, continuing your education as an adult, etc. This video will be helpful for anyone looking for a quick review of how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions, and really working with fractions in general. Let's start with adding fractions and jump into number one, where we have three-sevenths plus two-sevenths. Now, when we add fractions, we have to have a common denominator. So we always look to see if our denominators are the same. If they're the same, we can add. So in the case of number one, we have a seven and a seven for our denominator. So we have a common denominator right away. That means we can add. So we add the numerators, three plus two, is five. So this is going to equal five. And then we keep our denominator the same. Five sevenths is our answer. We can always look to see if we can simplify. The only common factor between five and seven is one. So we are done. Five sevenths is in simplest form and our final answer. Again, for number one, we had a common denominator of seven so we were able to add right away. Let's move on to number two, where we have four ninths plus one sixth. So for this one, we do not have a common denominator in our original problem. So we need to find a common denominator and then rename both of our fractions with that common denominator before we can add. Now we're going to find a common denominator between nine and six, by finding the least common multiple between nine and six, and that's going to be our least common denominator. You may be able to think about what that least common multiple is, but as a review, let's write out some multiples of both nine and six in order to find that least common multiple. And again, that's going to be our least common denominator. So I'm going to come to the bottom here. So nine and six. Now we can list the multiples of nine and six by just counting up by nine and six. Multiples go on forever. So what we can do, we can just start with four or five, see if we have any in common, and then we can go from there. So let's write out four multiples of nine. So nine, 18, 27, 36. Let's write out four multiples of six and then see if we have any in common. So six, 12, 18, 24. It looks like we have 18 in common here, and that's going to be our least common multiple. We're going to use that for our common denominator. So I'm going to rename these fractions underneath the original problem with that denominator of 18. So when we rename, we're going to use equivalent fractions. So we're not changing the value of the problem at all. We need to think, how do we get nine to equal 18? Well, nine times two is 18. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top in order to keep this equivalent. So four times two is eight. 8 eighteenths is equivalent to 4 ninths, but we renamed that original fraction of 4 ninths with that common denominator of 18. So again, we're not changing the value of the problem at all. We're just renaming with that common denominator so we can add. Let's do 1 sixth. So how do we get 6 to equal 18? 6 times 3 is 18. So we need to do the same thing to the top in order to keep this equivalent. One times three is three. Now we have the fractions in our original problem renamed with that common denominator of 18. So we can add, let's add our numerators. Eight plus three is 11. And then we keep our denominator 
of 18 the same. Always look to see if you can simplify 11 18ths. The only common factor between 11 and 18 is 1, so we are in simplest form. And this is our final simplified answer, 11 18ths. That's how we add fractions. Let's move on to subtraction. Here are our subtraction examples. We'll start with number one, where we have 8 tenths minus 3 tenths. Now, just like when we add fractions, we need a common denominator in order to subtract fractions. For number one, we have a 10 and a 10 for our denominators. So we have a common denominator in our original problem, so we can go ahead and subtract. For our numerators, we have 8 minus 3. That gives us 5. So this equals 5. And then our denominator of 10 stays the same. So we get 5 tenths. And that's our answer. But we can simplify here. We have a common factor other than 1 between 5 and 10 that we can divide both of those by. We have a greatest common factor of 5. So let's divide both of these by 5 in order to simplify. 5 divided by 5 is 1, and then 10 divided by 5 is 2. So we get 1 half for our final simplified answer. Let's move on to number 2, where we have 11 twelfths minus 1 third. Now for this problem, we do not have a common denominator between our original fractions that we're subtracting. So we need to find a common denominator and then rename these fractions with that common denominator in order to subtract. Now we can find a common denominator by finding the least common multiple between 12 and 3, and that's going to be our least common denominator. Now you may be able to think about what that least common multiple is without writing out uh, lists of multiples for both 12 and 3, but as a review, I'm going to write out some multiples of both 12 and 3 in order to find that least common multiple. So let's come below here, and we have 12 and 3. Now my suggestion is to write out four or five multiples for both 12 and three, see if we have any in common. If not, we can always extend our lists. Multiples go on forever, so again, my suggestion, start with four or five and then go from there. So let's start with 12. And we can list the multiples of 12 by just counting up by 12. So let's do four here, 12, 24, 36, 48. Now let's do four multiples of three and see if we have any in common. So three, six, nine, 12. And we have 12 in common. That's our least common multiple. So that's going to be our least common denominator. So let's go back up to the original problem and underneath here, we're going to rename our original fractions with that denominator of 12. Now, 11 twelfths already has that denominator of 12, so we do not need to rename. We can just bring our 11 down. Again, that's because we already have that denominator of 12. Now, as far as 1 third, we need to rename that. We're going to use equivalent fractions here. We're not going to change the value of the problem at all. So we need to think, how do we get three to equal 12? Well, three times four is 12. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top in order to keep this equivalent. So one times four is four. Four twelfths is equivalent to one third. So again, we're not changing the value of the problem at all because we're working with equivalent fractions. Now we have that common denominator of 12, so we can subtract. 11 minus 4 is 7, and then we keep our denominator of 12. 7 twelfths is our final answer. Always look to see if we can simplify. The only common factor between 7 and 12 is 1, 
So this is in simplest form and our final simplified answer, 7 twelfths. That's how we subtract fractions. Let's move on to multiplication. Here are our multiplication examples. We'll start with number one, where we have three eighths times two fifths. Now, when we multiply fractions, all we need to do is multiply straight across. So numerator times numerator, the top numbers, and then denominator times denominator, the bottom numbers. Once we do that, we can look to simplify if need be. So let's multiply our numerators first. So three times two, that gives us six, and then eight times five, that gives us 40. So we get six fortieths. Now six fortieths is our answer, but we can simplify here. Six and 40 have a common factor other than one that we can divide both our numerator and denominator by. We can divide both of these by two. Two is our greatest common factor. So let's divide both of these by two. And we get six divided by two is three. 40 divided by two is 20. So our final simplified answer is 3 twentieths. Let's move on to number two, where we have four times four ninths. So we have a whole number times a fraction. Now we need to rewrite that whole number as a fraction before we start. Now in order to put a whole number in fractional form, all we need to do is put it over one. So let's rewrite this problem. Four over one is four, it has a value of four. Again, it's just in fractional form. And we want to do that, that way we have a numerator and a denominator, and we can multiply straight across. Let's bring down our multiplication sign and the four ninths. Now we can multiply straight across. Four times four is 16. One times nine is nine. So we get 16 ninths, and that's our answer, but it's in the form of an improper fraction. So we want to convert this to a mixed number, and we do that by dividing our numerator, the top number, by the denominator, the bottom number, so 16 divided by nine. So we need to think, how many whole groups of nine are in 16? Well, one, that gets us to nine, and we have a remainder of seven, so that's our numerator of the fractional part, and then we keep our denominator of nine the same. So one and seven ninths is our final answer. We can always look to see if we can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. Seven ninths is in simplest form, so we are done. Now I do wanna do a quick recap of how I converted from that improper fraction to the mixed number, and I'm going to write everything out. So let's come below here. I did our numerator, 16, divided by nine. So how many whole groups of nine in 16? Well, one, that's our whole number right here. One times nine is nine. We do not hit 16 exactly, we have a remainder of seven. So remainder seven, that remainder goes right here. It's the numerator part of our fraction. And then we keep our denominator of nine the same. This nine right here, we keep it the same. So one and seven ninths as our final answer. That's how we multiply fractions. Lastly, let's move on to division. Here are our division examples. We'll start with number one, where we have one half divided by five sixths. Now we're going to use the steps keep, switch, flip in order to divide fractions. Now you may also hear keep, change, flip, switch or change. They both mean the same thing and it's the same process. Now this is also known as multiplying by the reciprocal. So let's rewrite this problem using those steps and see exactly how we divide fractions. So we always keep whatever comes first. So we have one half. So let's rewrite one half underneath, we keep. Then we switch or change to the opposite of division, which is multiplication. So let's write 
a multiplication sign. And then for our second fraction, we flip that fraction. That's called the reciprocal. So the bottom number, the denominator, is going to be the numerator. And the numerator is going to be the denominator. So our six goes on top and the five goes on the bottom. Now we're set up and we can multiply straight across. One times six is six. Two times five is 10. So we get six tenths. Now six tenths is our answer here, but we can simplify. We have a common factor other than one that we can divide both six and 10 by in order to simplify. And that common factor is two. So let's divide six and 10 by two here in order to simplify. Six divided by two is three. 10 divided by two is five. So our final simplified answer is three fifths. So again, keep, switch, flip, then we can multiply straight across and then look to simplify if necessary. Let's move on to number two where we have three divided by four sevenths. So keep, switch, flip. Now we have a whole number here and we need to rewrite that as a fraction when we keep it. And we do that by putting it over one and it's as simple as that. So three over one that still has a value of three holes. Again, it's just in fractional form. That way we have a top and a bottom and we can go through our steps. Then we switch or change. And then with the second fraction, we flip. So the seven is our numerator and the four is our denominator. So seven up top, four below. Now we can multiply straight across. Three times seven, 21, and then one times four is four. So we get 21 fourths, which is our answer, but it's in the form of an improper fraction. So let's convert this to a mixed number. And we do this by dividing our numerator, 21, by the denominator, four. So this is going to equal how many whole groups of four can we pull out of 21? Well, five whole groups of four, that gets us to 20. We have a remainder of one, that's our numerator, and then our denominator of four stays the same. So we get five and one fourth. Now let me go through how I converted that improper fraction to a mixed number one more time. I'm going to write it out. So we do 21, divided by four. So how many whole groups of four in 21? Well, five, that gets us to 20. Five times four is 20, subtract, we get a remainder of one. So this five is our whole number, five whole groups of four in 21, and then our remainder of one is the numerator of our fraction. We keep our denominator of four the same. Our final answer as a mixed number, five and one fourth. Now we can always look to see if we can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. One fourth is in simplest form, so we are done. Now one more thing I do wanna mention is when we have a fraction that comes first and then a whole number that comes second. So let's do a quick example and I'll just call this number three. So we'll come over here where we have some room and let's do um, one half divided by four. So keep, switch, flip. Keep the one half, switch to multiplication, and then we need to flip that four, the reciprocal of four. So what we do in this case we put our whole number over one, we put it in fractional form like we talked about for number two, and then we flip. So the one is our numerator and the four is our denominator. So we have one fourth for our reciprocal or flipped fraction. Then we can multiply straight across, one times one is one, 
2 times 4 is 8. 1 8 is in simplest form, so we are done. So you can see the difference there between whole number divided by a fraction and then a fraction divided by a whole number. It's always keep, switch, flip. Don't worry about if a fraction, whole number, or mixed number comes first or second. It's always those three steps in that order. So something to keep in mind. So there you have it. There's how you add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.